We present James Bolam and Rodney Bewes as Terry Collier and Bob Ferris in Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads. That's your 16th cup of tea. It don't give the 4.30 result at Weatherby in here. Fresh pot every time. All right, Doc Park. I thought this was an evening paper. Oh, don't put your cigarette stumps in the saucer. Oh, come on, ma'am. I'm not having tea at the Dorchester. <laughs> they never let you near the Dorchester. <laughs> they never let you near their coal cellars. What do you mean? Well, look at yourself, son. You haven't shaved. Yours not been near a comb. The dustman comes today, so don't linger around the front door, will you? <laughs> I am just casual. You're not casual, Terry. You're slovenly. What if anybody called? Well, that's all right. I'm in, aren't I? <laughs> have you got nothing better to do with your time? Mother, I have been in the army for seven years, serving my country, so that people like you can sleep safely in their beds at night so that this country can be a place to bring up kids decent. I would have thought the army would have taught you pride in your appearance. What you see here is a reaction, if you like, to the, the years of hardship and discipline and danger. I'm entitled to take it easy. All I want to do now is catch up on some reading and reflect on life. Well, the only reading you've caught up on is back numbers of the Football Monthly. And those glossy magazines with nude old pear girls on the front. <laughs> You're turning into a young Andy Cap. I've had a very active day, physically and mentally. I walked all the way to the Black Horse. I came back and fought the flab with Terry Wogan. It's been a very intellectual afternoon on the box. I watched gliding in the Dolomites, building a dam in Syria, and intermediate Spanish, much as gracias. It's amazing what you can learn on these school programmes, you know. If you hadn't gone round to the laundrette, you'd have seen the metamorphosis of the frog. Well, I had to do all your clothes, didn't I? Biologically. <laughs> now, who's that? Oh, it's only me. Can I come through? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, all. Just on my way back from work. And how's our working-class hero? Oh, doesn't he look a sight? I've just been telling him. Now, look at Bob. Look at his lovely suit. Look at his hair. <laughs> He's well-groomed. That's what Bob is, well-groomed. Ah, they're a bit tight, them trousers, aren't they? <laughs> Any sudden movement, mate, and you'll be back in the choir singing soprano. <laughs> now, that was coarse and unnecessary. You're not bringing your barrack room behaviour into this house. Would you like a cup of tea, Bob? If it's no trouble. Well, I've made 16 today already, pet. One more won't make any difference. You want to get your thinking cap on, my lad. There's more to life than football and nude au pair girls. Nude au pair girls? What, when, where? <laughs> Sorry, kid, you've just missed them. Hey, you do look in a right state. Have you been in that chair all day? Well, look, don't you start. I deserve a break. I've been catching up, reading and learning. I didn't know Frank Sinatra had married me a pharaoh. Mia Farrow? How old is that magazine? That was over ages ago. She's married to Andre Previn now. They've got twins. Married who? Andre Previn. You know, he's a conductor. Oh, I. What route's he on? <laughs> you know nothing. Andre Previn is the resident conductor with the LSO. The London School of Economics? That's... That's LSE. Well, that was a drug. That's LSD. I thought that was money. It was. It was before decimalisation. Heard of that, have you? You know, that's where the state takes over industry. That's nationalisation. My God, he got one right. <laughs> Will you take the money or go on for the grand prize? I know enough, mate. I know enough. I bet I'll learn more from that box than you do at your office. You look as though you're on the box. You look like some social misfit being interviewed for Panorama. <laughs> Just look at your hair and your vest. Slumped in that chair, surrounded by racing editions. you like a premature handicap. You're the second person who said that, and I love handicap. I'm proud of my home and my class. Just because you're flirting with the lower, lower, middle, middle. Just because you've got an office job and your fiancé lives on a Tudor estate with a monkey tree. 
<laughs> I want to get you out of yourself. I want you to meet new people, new faces. Friends of mine that you don't know. But how can I? How can I take you into homes looking like that? They wouldn't know how to react. Sherry for you, Bob? And what will your friend here have, meths? <laughs> I don't want to go into their homes, thank you very much. I don't want to go into their snooty semis. I don't want to meet your new friends. You'll be stopped going to football soon, you. Because Saturday will be golf. Look, I don't think you appreciate how the whole pattern of social life has changed. It's different now and I want you to be part of it. I want you to smarten yourself up and come out with me. If you prefer to sit here behind your class barrier, fine. Well, I don't mind coming out with you. For you, Robert, I might even shave. Where are we going, then? Oh, oh, I can't tonight. Uh, Thelma and I play badminton with Hugh and Janie. <laughs> tomorrow, then? No, no, I can't tomorrow. We're going to have supper with Frank and Chrissy at Mike and Linda's. And who is it Wednesday? Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice? <laughs> no, we're going to a barbecue at the rugby club with the Max Shanes. Gee, man. But Saturday, Saturday, Alan and Brenda have asked Thelma and me if we'd take you to have supper at their house. They'd like to meet you. Who the hell is Alan and Brenda? Well, you don't know Alan. Alan Boyle. He came up here from the south about three years ago. You mean Middlesbrough? <laughs> no, the deep south, Surrey. <laughs> I work with him, you see, and we've become very good friends, and he'd love to meet you. No, thanks all the same. I'll get in touch with some of the lads. I'll have a real Saturday night out. You won't find any of the lads. Not on a Saturday night. Not these days. They'll all be with their wives or fiancés at some steakhouse or trattoria. Or else they'll be staying in. There are friends round for barbecue chicken and match of the day. It's all very much of a ritual, you see. And if you don't grab my invitation, you won't be part of it. You'll be a man alone. A sort of Shane of the Elm Lodge housing estate. Walking the lonely streets, hearing the sounds of laughter and merriment behind warmly lit windows. Yeah, well, I'm best as a man alone. I'm well out of the Elm Lodge housing estate set. I know what goes on these days on these estates among your so-called respectable middle classes. I know what goes on behind them warmly lit windows. What? <laughs> Here's your tea, pet. Like a biscuit. Oh, thanks, Mrs Collier. What goes on? I know. I've read about it. Read about what? What goes on? Well, for God's sake, what does go on? I'll just get the biscuits. Wife swapping and witchcraft, suburban sex orgies, that sort of thing. Really? Well known fact behind that facade. Where do you get all this from, suburban orgies? Only this afternoon there was this bishop on the box going on about the moral decay of our society. Look, I'm only asking you around to Alan and Brenda's. I promise you won't be the first step on a downward spiral of decay and depravity. Just the five of us for a meal and a game of Scrabble. Scrabble? <laughs> well, perhaps not Scrabble. You'd come up with mucky words, wouldn't you? Hello, Bob. Nice to catch you. I just popped round to see me ma'am. How are you, love? How's Thelma? Fine, thanks, Ord. You must both come up and have dinner with us some night, perhaps the beginning of next week. Oh, well, he can't Tuesday. That's water polo with you and Jamie. <laughs> And Wednesday's potholing with Wilson, Keppel and Betty. Good God. Do you know who you remind me of? Uh, don't tell me. Andy Cap. I was going to say old man Steptoe. <laughs> <laughs> Were you? Do you know, he's never out of that chair. He reminds me of Ironside. Oh, <laughs> all I know, our Audrey, is that I've never been invited to your house for dinner. Babysitting and lawn mowing, yes, but never dinner. Well, it's so difficult with you. It's impossible to fit you in or match you up or pair you off. Aye, a man alone, a social outcast. And we can't invite him to our suburban sex orgies, can we, Audrey? <laughs> we can't even ask him to wife swapping parties because he hasn't got a wife to swap. <laughs> I bet he hasn't even got a clean pair of wife fronts. <laughs> You're so superficial, you lot. You're so concerned with appearances and status. A man like me's travelled. I can hold my own anywhere. I can talk about anything, from gliding in the Dolomites to the metamorphosis of the frog. I know there's more to life than knowing how to eat peas properly. Right, so come with me. Hold your own at Alan and Brenda's. Dazzle us with your scholarship and poise. Oh, Bob, you're not taking him in somebody's house, are you? <laughs> Do you think that's wise? You shut your face. All right, I'll go. Right, I'll go. Good. Well, it, uh 
Will it just be a meal, like? Probably, probably. Depends on who's there. We might play a few games after dinner. All right. <coughs> I haven't made so much tea since I was in the WVS. <laughs> Games? Behind that facade? Mother, <clears throat> I shall be dining out Saturday. So if you could lay out the Sea Island cotton shirt, the blue serge, oh, and just in case, a clean pair of Y fronts. <laughs> Hello, Bob, come in. Hello, Thelma, love. You're prompt. Brenda's still upstairs. Shall I take your coat, love? No, it's all right. I'll, I'll go up and see you. Hello, Alan. Uh, this is Terry Collier. Terry, uh, this is Alan Boyle. Hello, Terry. I've heard a lot about you. All right. How do you do? Can I get you a drink, Terry? What would you like? Unless you've got any meths, I'll just have a beer, thanks. <laughs> Afraid you'll have to settle for beer. <laughs> Bob? Uh, vodka and coke. Ice and lemon. Please. Uh. Bob tells me you're from down south, like, uh... <laughs> London, is it? Oh, just outside. Carshalton Beaches. <laughs> He's a Chelsea supporter. Oh, is he? Yeah, he used to have a season ticket there. I hate Chelsea. They stand for everything I hate in football, with all their show business supporters. They come out looking more like the younger generation than a football team. <laughs> we'll just go and get some ice. He said icily. Now, what are you being so aggressive for, eh? You're hardly across the doorstep, you're attacking the bloke's football team. It's not a very nice thing to do. How would you feel if somebody attacked our football team? They deserve it, Chelsea. That's not the point. I'm not talking about the merits of Chelsea Football Club, we're talking about manners. You know, like live and let live. Aye, all right, all right. Watch it, he's coming back. Uh, um, listen, Alan, uh, I'm sorry about that. I mean, I don't just hate Chelsea, I mean, I hate Arsenal, West Ham, Crystal Palace, <laughs> just as much. In fact, I hate all London teams. Oh, it's all right, Terry. All the same to me. Come on, girls. You must be glad to be back. I expect you noticed some changes. Oh, aye. What with decimalisation and Andre Previn conducting the LSE. <laughs> S-O. Are you interested in classical music, then? No, I can't abide it. Alan has a great collection of classical music, especially Beethoven. Oh, oh, oh well, he's all right. I mean, Beethoven's fine. It's the others I can't stand, but <laughs> Beethoven's all right. What are you interested in? What? Oh, well, I've got a wide range of leisure activities. He does jigsaws. <laughs> I do hundreds of things. That's one of the things you got out of the army. I've done more sports in the last few years than you've ever heard of. Football, cricket, swimming, water skiing, pole vaulting. You've never done any pole vaulting? Yes, I have. There was this Polish fellow in our hut. We used to tie him to the bed and then vault over him. <laughs> girls are coming down. You know my wife Brenda, don't you, Terry? Brenda? Brenda? No, I don't think so. Yes, you do. Brenda. I don't know any Brendas. Hello. Oh, that Brenda. <laughs> Hello, Bob. Hello, Terry. How nice to see you again. Well, if they'd only said your maiden name, I didn't know it was you, Brenda. Well, you're looking very pretty. You've certainly changed. I, I, I mean, you've changed from being pretty to even prettier. Uh, thank you, Terry. You're looking very, uh, well, yourself. <laughs> Drink, Thelma? Oh, yes, please. Sherry. Uh, did the services do you good? Uh, apart from this leg, yes. <laughs> What's wrong with your leg? He never talks about it. <laughs> oh, dear. Does it hurt? Only when making love or pole vaulting. <laughs> Yes, well, well, well. Reunion. Isn't it nice after all these years? Isn't it nice us all being together again? Yes. We haven't seen Alan and Brenda since Tuesday. No, I mean, with Terry being here, it takes you back to 4B Park Juniors, doesn't it? I'd like to think we've come a long way since Park Juniors. Well, you certainly have, Brenda. When I first knew you, you were living above your dad's chip shop near the glue factory. <laughs> Did your father have a chip shop, dear? A good one and all. The silver grid. Big helpings and free butter and all. I'd better see how things are doing. What are we having then? Rock salmon and chips for old time's sake? <laughs> you know, your Brenda was brought up on that. I'm surprised you didn't get more spots with all that vinegar drying your blood. <laughs> Would you give me a hand, Alan? Yes, sure, love. You'll never win any prizes for tact, will you, Terry? What do you mean? Look, Terry, some things Brenda doesn't want to be reminded about. You know, she's always been a bit... 
a bit stuck up. <laughs> There's nothing odd about someone who gets old, gets a bit of money, gets a nice home, wanting to forget the past. There's no harm in someone who lived above a chip shop wanting to batter themselves. Better themselves. <laughs> better themselves. Besides, <clears throat> her parents have retired now. They live in Westcliff-on-Sea. So leave off, right? If you must go down memory lane, leave off about her dad and a chip shop. All right, all right. Promise? My lips are sealed. Dinner is served. <laughs> Sit down, everyone. Oh, Brenda. Fresh asparagus. Hey, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse between two bread vans. You do have a nice way of putting things, Bob. You there, Thelma. Bob there. Terry at the end. Now, I've got red, white or fizzy rosé. Oh, Thelma prefers white. Mm. White all right with you, Terry? Mm-hmm. <laughs> do we have a fondue set on our wedding list? We will have tomorrow. Alan's mother bought us this at Harrods. She has an account there, you know. What lovely table mats. So these are new. Oh, hunting scenes. Mm. I just haven't had them out before. They were a present from Aunt Elsie. Oh, your Auntie Elsie. <laughs> How is she, Brenda? Is she still a cleaner down the brewery? <laughs> Yeah, I will say this year. Well, you know, I'm glad we didn't have rock salmon and chips. Oh, I'm sorry, Brenda, but you can't help thinking about the past, you know. Thinking about what used to be. Right, Bob? Die, well, it makes you think. Here we all are, having our sophisticated supper with Tia Maria's and wafer-thin mints. <laughs> Last time we all sat down to eat together was school dinners. Oh, I think Brenda's improved on cold ham, peas pudding and mashed potatoes. <laughs> that was Thursday ham, fish cakes Friday. Mince Monday. Meat Tuesdays. What sort of meat? We were never quite sure. <laughs> <laughs> what was on Wednesdays? Uh, Monday mince, Thursday ham. Monday mince, Tuesday meat. Of course, Wednesdays it was cheese fondue followed by gooseberry fool and wafer thin <laughs> mince. <laughs> I used to like that mashed potato. Oh, I, me and all, because it was all crumbly. And if you got a big spoonful and flicked it, you could get half a foray. <laughs> it was like a scatter bomb. Oh, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Brenda. I didn't mean to. Um, I'll get a cloth. Uh, no, it's all right, Terry. I'll do it. It, it comes all out all right, does it, uh, Gooseby Fool? We'll just have to up, sir, won't we? Well, it was, there's no panic. He'll come out with a rub. I doubt it. However, so much for Park Juniors. It can be of no interest to Alan. Alan went to a public school. Oh, minor one. <laughs> it was founded in 1766. So you can imagine how drafty it was. <laughs> I understood it was a leading public school. No, it was a leading, minor, drafty public school. <laughs> Aye, well, happy days. Do you really think so? Oh, of course there were smashing days. It's where I met you, Bob, wasn't it? Aye. What was Bob like at school, Thelma? Little terror? I was top at woodwork, a monitor, and secretary of the Lonnie Donegan Appreciation Society. <laughs> and if I remember rightly, president of the Deirdre Birchwood fan club. Deirdre Birchwood? Uh, who was Deirdre Birchwood? Oh, nice girl. You're ahead of us. Advanced for a range, mind. You know all them questions about sex your parents, the teachers and the scoutmaster would never answer? Deirdre would. <laughs> Deirdre Birchwood? She meant nothing to me. Yeah, she did. She was the gardener's daughter. Used to smell a weed killer. He was in love with her. I was not in love with her then. I was in love with little Mo Connolly and Claire Bloom. He used to sneak out at dinner time and meet her in the greenhouse. I remember once he got back into class and a caterpillar fell out of his trousers. <laughs> Never aware you'd been out with Deirdre Birchwood. She was a very common girl. I warned him about her. Consorting with a girl like that. Think yourself lucky you didn't catch Greenfly. <laughs> Should we move from the table? I will. I'll just pop upstairs and have a swill. <laughs> so first on the left. Lights above your head. Yeah. Shall we leave the past? I find our days at Park Juniors very irrelevant. We're all different people now. Not necessarily. We're all older and we've all acquired a lot of possessions. Underneath, we're still the same people. 
we were all on a desert island, we'd soon revert to type. We'd soon revert to the jungle law of Form 4B. Some quicker than others. Haven't you got any skeletons in the cupboard, love? Haven't you got any dark secrets? Well, I don't suppose it means anything to you now, Brenda, but uh, I did give you my coronation mug. And an autographed picture of Sherpa Tensing. I really can't remember. Oh, it doesn't matter. The autograph was forged anyway. Terry sold it to me. I have some memories that aren't so pleasant. Oh, you mean the boiler room incident? What's this? <laughs> Do we have to? Well, you were full of it at the time. It was most upsetting. I was attacked by two boys in the pitch dark of the boiler room. If it hadn't been for the janitor, I don't know what would have happened. Hey, Bob, I've just been thinking, what was the name of that girl who seduced you and me in the boiler room? <laughs> How dare you! Oh, come on, love, it was years ago. Oh, it's monstrous. I was attacked. When's this? In the boiler room. So was Bob and me. If it, <laughs> if it hadn't have been for that janitor... Well, isn't this fun, eh? Happy days. <laughs> Down memory lane. <laughs> Part of your reluctance to leave the past, Terry Collier, is that you have very little to look forward to in the future and your present has little to offer beyond the pub and the billiard hall. Most of us have improved ourselves, developed as people, but you're an embarrassment to your family and an embarrassment to your friends. He doesn't embarrass me. He might be coarse and he might be vulgar. Are you with me or against me? <laughs> Shut up a minute. He might be crude, he might be rough at the edges. And all right, he might have eaten the wrong end of his asparagus. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing, I'll tell you one thing. He's down to earth, and he's honest. Well, here's a turn-up for the book. The good old days again, those two back in the saddle. I think Bob's right. What? I never thought I'd see the day when you took Terry Collier's side. I like a lively discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, he's honest. And that's something we all seem to have lost since Park Juniors. He's got no pretensions. He would never deny that he lived above a chip shop. I didn't live above a chip shop. <laughs> what are you trying to infer, Thelma? That I'm a snob? Yes, you are, Brenda. You're an enormous snob. You always have been. What a bitchy thing to say. Well, it's the truth. I like the frank exchange of views. <laughs> if I was such a snob, why would I invite that into my house for dinner? I'll tell you why you asked, Terry. Because the only way you can measure how far you've come from 23 Dog Lead Lane is to parade your possessions in front of an audience. I've seen you do it before. When you watch people admiring your fabrics and praising your carpets and envying your fondue set, you, you sit there and you, you bust your bra. <laughs> <laughs> I've walked miles. I couldn't get a bus, then when I did, there was standing room only. Ah, you've had your usual strenuous day, I see. Couldn't you use the one cup and wash it every time? <coughs> ah, Saturday night was a mirage, wasn't it? I thought I saw you shaved in a suit, going out to dinner with nice people. But it must have just been a dream. Turned into a nightmare. Have you been in that chair all day again? Oh, I went down the black horse, a couple of bevies and a bet. Dressed like that. Hello, Mrs Collier. How's Andy Cap? Hello, Bob. If only you'd take an example from Bob, Terry. If only you'd try to improve yourself. Try the new improved Terry Collier. <sighs> He'll never change. I'll go and wash up these cups. I don't know. Look, kid, I'm not very good at things like this, but, uh, well... Thanks for sticking up for us the other night. That's all right, mate. No, 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 I appreciated that, I really did. And, uh, and Thelma, well, well, Thelma and I, I mean, that's me and Thelma, well, we've never, I mean, in the past, but... <laughs> well, the point is, I thought she was marvellous, and I think you're a lucky lad, and you did the right thing there, and I hope you'll both be very happy, and I'm very sorry I said that about Deirdre Birchwood's caterpillar. <laughs> well, I'll tell Thelma, she'll be pleased. Is she upset about Saturday night? No, not really. She never could abide Brenda. Ever since I gave me coronation mug and that autographed Sherpa tense in photo. <laughs> I forged that, you know. I know. I remember what was written on it. Cheers, Terry, Sherpa tensing. <laughs> I'll make a hole in your social calendar, though, but now there'll be no Alan or Brenda on Saturday nights. Still, I suppose you can move Frank and Christine up from Tuesday or Michael and Linda back from Friday. 
It does leave a night free for you and me, though, doesn't it? Just the two of us, lads night out. Oh, I don't know if I could keep up with you, Mr. White Collar. A man in the grey flannel suit. I don't want you to change, mate. You just go on being as... as, well, as, as forthright as you are. And as vulgar and as pig ignorant. I am not pig ignorant. This is my seat of learning, this chair. What I learned from that box, I am at the University of Life. And what have you learned since Saturday, eh? Apart from what a fondue is and which end of your asparagus to eat. <laughs> you don't know six useful Spanish phrases, do you? Or how to build a dam in Syria. Or the metamorphosis of the frog. <laughs> Do you? Certainly. Go on, then. What is the metamorphosis of a frog? What? Well, well, it starts out with just dots in the water. Amoebas, they're called. Then... Hang on, hang on, hang on. They're not amoebas. Yes, they are. No, they're not. Amoeba is the most primitive life form. They're so small, they're impossible to see. Well, if you can't see them, then how do you know they're not busy turning themselves into frogs? <laughs> There's no answer to that. Well, go on, what happens then? Well, then you get your frog spawn. And you get this small black thing which develops two front legs and a head and then some back legs, and this ends up as a tadpole. And after the tadpole? Your tadpole becomes your frog. And then? What? And then? Well, then it turns into a butterfly. <laughs> You've just been listening to Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads. James Burlam and Rodney Bewes appeared as Terry and Bob. Bob's fiancée, Thelma, was played by Bridget Forsyth, and Terry's sister, Audrey, by Sheila Fern. Mrs. Collier was played by Olive Milborn. Alan and Brenda Boyle were played by Julian Holloway and Greta Gourier. The series was created and written by Dick Clement and Ian Lafrené. It was adapted for radio and produced by John Browell. Listen again next week to part nine Storm in a tea chest. Tomorrow in this classic comedy slot, Wendy Craig and Francis Matthews star in Not in Front of the Children. Loose Ends on BBC Radio 4. Now I'm delighted to welcome to Loose Ends Mavis Staples, whose career in music, first of all gospel and church music, started in the 1950s with her family group, the Staples Singers. In the 1960s, they were an integral part of the civil rights movement, performing alongside Martin Luther King. When your father was alive, that's that's when you first you were sort of I don't want to say a warm up act, but you, you with Martin Luther King, you you would be singing, and then he would be making his speeches. Oh yes, we would sing before he spoke. Yeah, and and we would sing a song that was his favorite of his, of my family's. Why am I treated so bad? Yeah. So we would uh, every time we get ready to go to the meetings, he called my father Stape. He said Stape. Yeah. You're going to sing my song tonight, right? <laughs> Pop said, oh, yeah, doctor, we're going to sing your song. Through that, I've got to check out the story that, uh, that I'm told that uh, Bob Dylan, uh, he proposed to you, he wanted to marry you. He did. Yeah. He proposed. Yeah. I turned him down. <laughs> well, well, I have to ask why, because, I mean, no, an awful lot of women would have yeah. said yes, a lot of men would have said yes. But just... <laughs> oh, he was a cutie. You know, he, curly, curly hair, yeah. beautiful blue eyes. But, but was it musical differences or it was, no, billing it was, problem? It was, it was youth. Yes. We were too young. I kept telling him, I said, Bobby, we are too young. I said, I'm too young. I said, I can't even cook yet. He <laughs> said, maybe she won't have to cook. <laughs> <laughs> and you got Elvis, didn't you? I met Elvis. Yeah, did he Elvis, propose? He, no, he didn't promote. Okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, yeah, I was fortunate to meet a bunch of those guys. David Bowie, you 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 met David him? Bowie. Yeah, yes. Bowie. Yeah, I sorry. met David Bowie. Yeah, he came to the dressing room one night to meet me. I was opening for Prince. And, and, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. yeah. Well, you mentioned you mentioned Prince. Well, he was quite influential in your that that period of your career. When yes, you, 